normies, mm-hmm. you know, regular folk. Uh, I'm not aware of any truther NDEs. Maybe you are, because you've done more work in this than me. Are you aware of anyone that would identify as a truth seeker? They've looked into conspiracies and they realize this world isn't what we thought it was. And they've had an NDE and they've come back into their bodies. Are you aware of any of those? Mm-hmm. No, there's a there's there's people there's a lot of people floating around that um, have done certain sort of astral travels and things like that, um, but not so much. There's not so what there's not someone that's. I think Howdy Mikowski had one actually. He had one uh, back in his younger years. Um, I remember him saying when I interviewed him. I can't remember exactly um, what what he said about it because it's a long time since I spoke to him, but. Other than that, I can't think of too many others. So, um, but this is where my train of thinking is uh, right now is just in terms of maybe learning, you know, to lucid dream and astral travel to really get a, a view. I believe the astral realm is just another layer of this matrix. I think we need to get out of the astral altogether. And they've they've set it up there as um, you know they've they've set it up well there. I mean, it, they've put on all the the bells and whistles when you go there. Um, so for me, my intention is to get completely out of the astral, which I believe to be a part of this matrix. Um, but I've not, I, to, I've not, I don't know of any kind of truth seeker, prominent one at least, that um, that has had an NDE um, off the top of my head that's out there sharing their their stories. I'm sure there's a lot of viewers of this video that will contact me and say I've had an NDE, and I'd be open to to listening. But no one out there speaking, I think, is the point. I think most NDEers that come back into their bodies would have spent a lifetime being tricked and manipulated. So most of them would probably have uh, watched the BBC Evening News or whatever equivalent uh, and listened to government ministers and listened to all the propaganda and all the bullshit mind control that comes through movies and TV and stuff. Uh, So they've spent a lifetime swallowing all of that. So they're rife for manipulation when they cross over. Mm. I think that's probably the case in uh, many instances. I I think they're intentionally used um, or they're selected to become what I call agents of the matrix. So they they, they have that experience. They're given that wonderful, wonderful experience where they're shown, you know, guides and all that stuff, heaven or whatever. And then they come back down and they're like, guys, it's great nothing to worry about so then it's really sad i mean it's beyond evil they're literally selected and being used to promote this agenda back down here um and to tell their story which is because see i think that they get shown uh the the fake nde where they've shown the heaven and the guides and everything but when you look at um certain films like beetlejuice and others there's there seems to be a an, another earthly realm in the astral where you really go when you really die and there's a processing center that you need to sign into um and all that stuff and so there's there's souls that are being enslaved here and on the other side so but that's if you if you go to that light tunnel um so there, there's two there's two uh, places there's the nde fake realms within the astral that that they show people that they come back down and promote and then there's the real place that people really go to so that's the other thing that that people need to research and and be aware of yeah just be like zamo from grange hill back in the day just say no yeah reference there to uh people of my generation i've got another question though tony about all this so if this realm was created by some sort of lesser god, demiurge, some bloody satanic, demonic entity. Where was the original god of creation when this was taking place? And given that this place has been running for a very long time, nobody knows exactly how long, but it's a bloody long time. It's been a lot of suffering, a lot of trauma, a lot of really bad stuff has happened in this realm. Why? Has it not been shut down by now? People will say, oh, free will. Uh, You know, God can't just intervene. It's got to be the the will of people. Well, how many people do do you think have wanted to live like this? How many people do you think want this place to be the way it is? Is that not us expressing our free will? Because a lot of people are very unhappy here. 
But I just wonder why, if there's a, an original creative benevolent force out there, and I do actually feel that there is, I'm not trying to deny that. It's a question. I've been asking questions all year through my God videos, and this is just another one. Mm. I would, I, I just ponder why it is that the original creator has not seen this hellish realm and what goes on here and mm. is not severely pissed off at having been usurped by this lesser entity or force or entities that have uh, create, created this bastardized realm and mm. said, enough is enough. I'm shutting this place down. Yeah. It's a question. I don't have the answer. But well, yeah, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a good question because, it, again, if we take the, take the, the basis that the real God is also omnipotent and benevolent and all the things that you, you associate with God, it, it, it begs that question. You know, even if this is a fake copy, an AI, if God's, the real God's all powerful, where, where is it? You know, um, you know I, I think like we said earlier, I think we have a spark of essence within us. There is, um, there is this theory that many of us, came back at this time to actually help with that process to bring it down. Um, that's, I've heard that one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for me, I've always felt like, um, you know, uh, I've always, ever since I woke up, I always felt like I'm, it's more than just getting out. I want to help bring this down, like not change it. Like you say, I think, I don't think it can be changed. We're not going to have 5d new earth. We're not going to wake up to that, but I think, uh, helping along with others to 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 um, educate and liberate uh, the souls to to get them to think more sovereign uh, and not to say I'm better or you're better or whatever, but just to play a part in that process with others to um, get people into a more sovereign mindset uh, uh, and to because remember so many people have been through memory wipe memory wipe memory wipe memory wipe and i think the more memory wipes a person goes to goes through the more it's the more difficult it is for them to to see through things so maybe uh, there's a whole group of us that came in and you know uh, decided to come in and bust bust this place up and 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 when when souls coming out are, are, are getting out of here, it's almost like you're taking the batteries out of the AI, you know, because we power this thing. So the more batteries that come out, wouldn't it stand to reason that the whole thing starts to shut down? So maybe that is um, what's going on. And again, we are the thing that we are searching for. We are that um, aspect that's coming in to change this um which comes back to self again so but yeah if there is like a wider greater god that we came from like what where is it uh, so it i i understand the question and i it's don't a question and i don't imagine anyone will be able to easily answer it yeah but i do wonder why it is that certain individuals such as us and many that will be watching this kind of get it you know we we wake up to these things and we start paying attention and we question and we're always in a minority of course we've always been in a minority in society so there's something about us and i don't know if it's because on a spirit soul level we decided to come in and make things better here uh, i don't particularly go with that but it's a suggestion that people have but something has got to explain why it is that the likes of us question these things there's a few common denominators because i have a lot of conversations with people now of this nature i get emails every day i respond to comments left on my video channels i go to conferences and get into face-to-face -face conversations with people and what you often find is people will say uh people that are on a similar path to us oh i never felt like i fitted into this place they'll say when i was a kid i was a loner at school and i used to shut myself away in my room and i just never was into stuff that other kids were never really felt a part of society and that's the way it was for me i was a bit of a hermit bit of a loner just like doing my own thing and that's something you hear so often so it seems that with many of us almost from birth we know that there's something wrong with this place and we know we don't belong here. And that's why we have such a hard time operating here. And maybe that's why we feel stirred and galvanized and motivated into doing whatever we can with our time to try and help others and 
like you say, we can't fix this place because it's unfixable, but we can minimize the suffering a little bit. So many of us make that our life mission and something's got to explain why we choose to do that. But most of the normies out there don't. So mm. I'll go into a Weatherspoons pub uh, and I see other guys sitting around having a laugh, talking about the football. Uh, somebody will walk in, ah, you old bastard, come on over and have a pint, you know, and they're just laughing and they haven't got a care in the world. And I think, you ever feel oh, jealous? Am I? Do you ever feel yeah, jealous? Yeah, yeah, in some ways I do. In some ways I do. You know why? Because they're happy. Ex exactly, yeah. They're happy. Yeah. They're happy with football. They're happy with uh, their friends. They're happy with having a conversation about nothing in particular. They don't realize anything's wrong. No. They, they, they think everything's fine here. Yeah. You know, they're, they're going to have to undergo suffering in their lives. They're going to get old. Their bodies are going to decay, like we said earlier, at some mm -hmm. point. But for now, everything seems fine to them. And I just wonder why we're different to them. What makes us different? How have we been able to tear that veil down and see what lies behind it? And these other people haven't, or the will hasn't been there. They've just not wanted to. Maybe we're older souls. I don't know. Maybe well, we've been here a few more times than them. So we're a bit more evolved, or maybe we've been tricked so many times that we're bloody sick of it now. Uh, and maybe they've got those lessons to learn still. Uh, I think, I think the NPC phenomenon is real. I think if this is a computer game, a simulation, just like in a computer game or simulation, you have the fill in people and they're the characters that uphold the, the matrix and the agent Smiths and stuff. Um, but so I that think, raises the question, does an NPC realize that they're an NPC? Um, you would think not. You would think not. Um, I, Maybe they're I, the ones in Witherspoon then. Yeah, I asked the question um, on one of my live streams, can consciousness permeate an NPC? So can you be an NPC and and then wake up enough to where you start, um, I don't know, you, 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 you move in line with consciousness or whatever, and then you start carving your own path? Because when I look back at my former self, um, I've always felt strange here and like you say, never fit in, school was difficult, everything like that. But, you know, my 20s, 30s, you know, it was football, I'd be out with my friends, you know, I like partying. Yeah, I would, I would say I was kind of like an NPC, you know, so, but I'm not now. And so I'm wondering, was, was I an NPC that consciousness permeated or was I just, did I just need to wake up from, you know, being in, in like a dreamlike state? But these are questions that we can, we can ponder forever on. So, um, that's right. So, yeah, it's it's um... I used to be like that as well. I mentioned the 90s earlier. I had an absolute blast in the 90s. I was really loving life. Yeah. I was a DJ. I was going out to clubs. The only things that mattered to me were music, uh, clubs, partying, you know, girls. That was it. Yeah. Uh, so I was in an NPC mindset as well. But something happens to some of us to mm. shake us out of that but evidently doesn't happen to most. So if there really are NPCs embedded in society, that would suggest that there's just a relatively small number of us who are the real players. Yes. yes. So all of this is to facilitate our experiences. And you've got these vast numbers of people who are there for no particular apparent reason other than to be backdrop people. And to annoy us. I mean, I yes, talk about it all, all the time. I'll go out and I'll move to a new place and the neighbor will move next to me and I'll start throwing parties on a Monday night or, you know, it just wherever I go, it seems the, the more you become aware of the ph phenomenon, the more you sit. I'll sit down in a cafe. Like every single time I sit down in a cafe now, someone will come and sit on the table next to me, even though it can be relatively air, um empty either with a screaming baby or or you know bl blaring out music on their mind reggaeton i know you love that yeah yeah i do like reggaeton but when i want to listen to it you know not when it's forced upon me so um but but if you imagine the source players that we're the soul beings we're the energy generators right so the npcs maybe they don't generate the energy in the same way that we do the food the louche and so when they, when we get annoyed by by these things, and uh, then then we're creating more le loose for the system. So, uh, and maybe that's why they. I always describe a, an NPC as someone with that lacks curiosity. They just they just don't have that 
why is things like this? They, we see all the things going on. Why is there war all the time? Why there, there just seems to be that lack of curiosity, and like you could sit them in front of a, a documentary for twenty four hours explaining the truth of the true nature of reality, and they'll still call you a conspiracy theory at the, conspiracy theorist at the end of it. Um, so I've, I've had that experience. I can remember many years ago when my daughters were uh, very little, I was walking home with the mother of another child uh, one summer afternoon and they were spraying overhead. Surprise, I know. And uh, I was getting really pissed off because it was crisscrosses through the sky. And I said to this woman, uh, doesn't this piss you off? You know, aren't you annoyed at this? And she just sort of laughed. She went, huh. Yeah. And I said, you know, what they're doing in the sky, spraying all this stuff. She was like, uh, uh, I've got to go now. And she wouldn't <laughs> even look up. She wouldn't yeah. even look at the sky to see yeah. what I was talking about. She just made her excuses and left. Yeah. So they just won't look at it. People won't look at it. Think yeah. of the fight scene in the movie They Live when Rowdy Roddy Piper has to beat that black guy to a pulp, beat the shit out of him to yeah. force him, force him to put on the glasses to see what's really going on. That's but then really when he put picture. the glasses on, he, he saw it, didn't he? He finally saw it. So Yeah, but he, he was forced to. He had to be yeah, forced, he was forced to, to do it. Yeah, yeah, I know. Great stuff, Mark. I think, uh, well, we don't have all the answers, but um, we, we, I think that's part of this process. We have I, all the questions. We have all the questions, yeah. Um, but I think really breaking down the whole God deception is, is key. And... Um, it's not going to make you popular, but it's going to. Uh, it's at least it feels that you're, you're you're saying you know the truth of things. And I think, like you said earlier, there's a lot of people out there that want to flower this up as some some somewhere that it's really not. And I think we need to hold this God character accountable for for his creation. Certainly, the one of this matrix. Anyway, I kick it in the balls metaphorically every single day. The other thing is, right, sorry, I'm going, that, you know, they record everything, right? Like these, um, these, uh, when they, when you go for the life review, your whole life is recorded. So when you're taking a dump or you're, you know, being intimate with someone or what, they, like, where, no one asks me for that. Um, no one ever questions that, these NDEs. They don't, they don't even question that. It's crazy the things that they've done here and, uh, continue to do here until now at least so anyway mark i want to thank you so much for coming on and being uh very uh candid and blunt um because that's how i am as well and yeah where can people find you so my hub website is djmarkdevlin.com and there's links from there to all my other platforms my videos are on youtube uh still fifth channel bitshoot odyssey and rumble I've got audio on Spreaker and I've got uh, two regular podcast series. Good Vibrations is my speech based one and The Sound of Freedom is Conscious Message Music. And there's also my so-called God videos. And I've got a new YouTube channel actually called Mark Devlin God Talks, which is where I host all of those. So I want to thank you for having me on, Tony. It's been a very cathartic discussion today. <laughs> I've enjoyed getting some of this stuff out. And I do really just want to leave things on an inspiring, positive note, because it can seem very hopeless uh, when you get into all this material. But if you and I both felt that there was no hope at all, and we just thought, well, what's, what's the fucking point of any of it? We wouldn't be doing these shows, right? Mm. We'd have just given up. Yeah. So obviously we feel that there's something worth striving for, and there is something positive out there ultimately to aim towards i certainly feel that this force that's created this place is one of evil and malevolence but it's in counter uh, it, it stands counter to what was originally there before it which is the default position of creation i feel is goodness and love and joy it's just been uh hijacked and usurped by this place and, and what created it so our ultimate aim is to get back to that original source, God consciousness. And if I didn't believe it was out there and I didn't believe it was good and it was worth striving for, I would have given up long ago and I wouldn't waste my time doing any of this. Yeah. So the fact that we do... You're just being Weatherspoons talking about football. <laughs> I only wish I could. I sometimes wish I could have conversations like that and just not care about anything. But for those that are watching that aren't from the UK, Weatherspoons is probably like the the most decrepit um, chain of pubs 
in in the yeah, UK, but it's bloody cheap beer, though. It's like uh, uh, there's a lot of NPCs in Weather Weatherspoons. Sorry to anyone that's that's watching. The, the, this the beer is cheap, and and that's the key. That's yeah. why I go there. <laughs> <laughs> okay mark well great thanks again i'll put all mark's links in the description below thanks again for watching everyone don't forget to hit the like share this around and uh, we'll see you again soon take care cheers